Keith Davidson from Albertson & Davidson. In this video, I'm going to discuss a probate summons. This is if the court requires you to serve a summons to a respondent in your probate matter. Typically, when you're filing a petition in probate, you don't need to serve a summons, but occasionally you do with certain types of filings, and this is the form that you'll use if the court tells you that you need a summons. So we'll start off by going to the Google website and just putting in judicial counsel forms. And that'll bring up our judicial counsel website. Today we're going to be using form DE-125, which is the summons for probate. This is the form that you're going to use if you're doing something, for example, like a probate code section 850 action where you're asking that property be returned to a trust or returned to an estate. And those types of lawsuits require that you personally serve a summons on the defendant or the respondent. Those are the same people. And once they receive the summons, then they've been personally served and they know that they need to answer the complaint or answer the petition and show up in court and, and state their defense. So we start off by filling out the name of the person who you're going to serve. So in this case, let's use the example of Bob Smith. And then you have to say who it's from. So we'll just put in John Doe. And then you have to say the estate. So let's say this is the estate of Herbert Davidson. So that's the information. Now, if you you have to have a separate summons for each of your respondents. So if you have multiple people who you're suing, you do multiple versions of this form. Down here, you're going to put the case number. So whatever your case number is, you'll put that in there. And then you'll have the name and address of the court. So if you're in Los Angeles, you just put Los Angeles Superior Court. I use Los Angeles as an example because it's our largest county in California by population, but you also uh, could, you know, whatever court you're in, you just put that in there. San Diego, San Mateo, Ventura, Orange County, whatever it is, just type it in there. And then you'll put the address of the court. And this is so that everybody knows where the action is pending and where they need to file their answer. And then you have the name, address, and telephone number of the filing party's attorney. So this is so when somebody answers a complaint or a petition, they have to file it in the court, but they also have to give notice of that, mail notice of that, to the plaintiff or petitioner. And if the plaintiff or petitioner has an attorney, then it go to their attorney. So in this case, I would just put my own name in here. If I'm pro per, I would just put my name, and you can actually just type pro per after it. If I'm appearing as a lawyer, then I would just put my name in law firm. And then I would just put the address where any paperwork should be sent. Oops. Now, notice right here, this form is going to be signed by the clerk of the court. But you have to fill out the form first, and then you have to take it to the court, and the court clerk will sign it. They'll put their stamp on it, and they'll also put a seal on it so that you know that it's been issued by the court. Once the court signs this and puts the seal on it, the clerk does that, then you're going to have to personally serve it. And that's what the proof of service is for. And we've gone through a number of proofs of service in our Form Vault series. But this is where you would just fill out who is serving this form. Now you'll notice here that at the time of service I was at least 18 years of age and not a party to this action. It's very important when you personally serve documents that a party to the action cannot be the person who serves this summons. You have to hire a service or in some counties you can use the sheriff's department. But normally you're going to hire a proof of service company and they're going to serve this for you. And then they'll fill out the person who was served, when they were served, the address where they were served, and all of this will be filled out for you. And you'll see down here that there's different options that they can use. So your, your, your proof of service company will either hopefully personally deliver it 
Or there's different ways to do what we call substituted service. If you can't find the person, sometimes you can leave it at their business or home, depending on what rules you're operating under. You can also have mail service. Sometimes when you do substituted service, you have to both leave a copy and mail a copy. So you want to make sure that your proof of service company fills out all the appropriate forms here. You also want to make sure that you fill out number four, which is the notice to the person served as an individual defendant as a person sued under a fictitious name on behalf of. So you want to make sure that you fill out the right information here as to the person you served. If you're just serving an individual, then you can just click that box. And then the person who served this is going to have to put their information. So if you hire a proof of service company, they'll fill that out for you and put their name and information. They'll also list any fees for service and they'll have to declare under penalty of perjury that the service was actually done properly. You'll notice in number seven, I'm a California Sheriff or Marshal. That will be the box that will be checked if you hire the Sheriff's Department to do your proof of service. And then you'll just date it and you'll sign this form.